Hi, welcome to Belmont Journal. I'm Steve Rosales, your host today. And after 22 years as director of Belmont's Council on Aging, our own Nava Niv Vogel has decided it's time to go on to a new adventure. So with me today is Nava. Good morning, Nava. Nice to see you here. Uh, Formal handshake. Like I'll give you a hug, but I'll wait till afterwards. <laughs> Good. So 22 years. Yeah. You've seen a lot in that time. Yes. So um, how come now? Why, why leave now? Yeah, that's a great question. Few things. Um, I wanted to wait till we got past the worst of COVID, <clears throat> that we're up and running, that we pass through this very difficult time before taking this step. And from having learned from so many before me, seniors that is, about what is a good retirement, what is not as happy a way to approach retirement, I decided I'm young enough to start a new adventure, to start another um, life and it's a good time to do that while I'm still healthy. And I feel like uh, the center isn't a good place. So I feel good about leaving it at this point. Leaving it in good hands. Leaving it in great hands, Well, yes. you certainly built, uh, built the thing basically from, from scratch. So, uh, you know, when I was a selectman back in the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. My goodness, we didn't have a senior center. We had the place without walls. It was the senior center without walls. Mm -hmm. And uh, they met in various places, library, churches, town hall. They had programming, but no central place. Mm -hmm. And then there was a drumbeat by some very passionate seniors mm -hmm. that they wanted their own senior center, mm -hmm. but there was no place to put it. The parish hall up at Our Ladies came on and a deal was quickly struck mm -hmm. before they sold it. Mm -hmm. uh, some people liked it, many didn't. But mm -hmm. I'm comfortable that it gave us a place. Mm. So, you know, is that when you sort of came in? or That what? is exactly when I came in. Um, I came in a number of months after, uh, after uh, staff settled in and, and a staff member, a center pro, uh, program coordinator was hired. So the Our Lady of Mercy uh, Parish Hall, that center gave us a way to learn how to do programs within a center and made us learn what do we need to make a center succeed. And it certainly housed many programs that I heard from seniors weren't possible before. So it was a, it was a great boost, actually, because um, there was progress on the whole, the senior center matter. And we did a lot in those years. Another thing is, it was very helpful because the more programs we did, the more people that came to programs, the more we were able to make a case to the community that this is what's needed, is a center. You know, you have something, people come. And more will come if we were so blessed to have a permanent center because that was a rented space and certainly um, as I said in my remarks on Monday, um, if there wasn't the, the Kendall School um, property available and if we didn't, if the town didn't lose the lease uh, on the Our Lady of Mercy property, we don't know if there would have been the political will to move forward with building a new center and, and bringing uh, the debt exclusion vote forward. So... Well, all these years, that's nice because it, it gives me a personal sense of validation. As I said, many people were not happy that they didn't have a new center and didn't have it now. But there was no place to put it. Yeah. So you and I were chatting before that it's, it's sort of, it's good luck in sort of a black good luck way mm -hmm. that the Kendall Center actually, for the arts, burned to the ground. Yeah about at the same time as the lease was getting ready to expire, which now gave us a postponed space to put a, a center or at least a building. Yeah, I mean, we would have uh, been, you know, this way, we, I mean, you can't leave these programs homeless, right, <laughs> and staff. So, so you came in, and before we get into other things here, but mm -hmm. let's close this loop here. So, yes. so you came in and you helped design the center, and you said that, that 
you, you knew what you needed, or you learned the types of spaces you needed and what you needed right. and what would work Correct. and what people wanted. That was very important because as fantastic, and I, I really do mean this, as our architect was, there was a lot, and he was an expert on senior center design. There were things he did not know that were needed, and because of our experience, we were able to push for. And you helped design that? Uh, the program, yes. Um, they turned, the architect and the building committee turned to me for the programmatic needs, how to design the, for the programs, yes. There you go. What's your favorite room in that place? Ah, well, the jewel in the crown is the conference room on the second floor. That is just so beautiful. Um, just looks out to the parking lot, which, you know, and the field, which oh, is a nice space. It looks out to space. the green field, the green it space. Come on, it's all how you, pr it's all how you present it. Yeah, no, you're right. It looks up with the open, <laughs> open green space, the recreational land. <laughs> this, this is true. Well, there's another other reason I like it, because if I have a meeting in there, then at least I get to see, well, who's, actu you know, who's actually coming? Can we start the meeting in a few minutes? Because I see X, Y, and Z getting out of their car. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, you know, well, you know, maybe there's a naming opportunity. Maybe it'll be the Nava Room. I'm actually, I might just call it the Nava Room from now on, <laughs> and it'll catch on. So, uh, well, so that opened 08, 09, and you've been there mm -hmm. since. Okay, so uh, you've been there. So what are some of your fondest memories of your time there? Mm. Well, you know, as I came here, um, and it's actually not at the center, but one of my thoughts um, coming here and doing this show is uh, having done the uh, inaugurating Kitty Haas's show on, on this station. Kitty Haas was uh, a senior in Belmont. Uh, she's since moved, but she, in her 90s, started a show um, to interview people. And I was the first person she interviewed. And just to show how cute Kitty was, the first show she had fake champagne for us to drink. And that was that was pretty cute. There you go. So that that was pretty adorable. Well, <coughs> you know, we have a limited budget here on Belmont Journal, at least at the moment, till we get big sponsors. But we have like uh, real water, real, real water here today. <laughs> So, real Belmont water. There you go. <laughs> That's wonderful. It is potent, isn't it? <laughs> we used to have Belmont Springs at, at, at the Our Lady of Mercy. That is that has changed. Yeah, Belmont have... Springs really was in Belmont, right up by the Belmont Country Club. That's where it is. Really? I have some old pictures. Yeah, and people used to go up to the Belmont Spring. It had a little, but that's where the, that is Belmont Spring. <laughs> that, that creek that's back there. That's where it was. Oh, so, that's... uh in any event, so so you had so so you did okay. So what do you think your greatest uh, greatest success is? You've had a twenty two year career. Out of all of that, aside from the building of the center, mm. I mean, where wh where do you get the most? What are you most proud of? What do you think your greatest success would be? Is it really comes down to um, witnessing people creating an atmosphere so that people come together on their own. And, you know, creating a sense that we're community, we can, we can disagree with each other, we can, um, people, for example, people fight over space in the center. I always say, it's like, it's like the world, you know? Um, you know, in the, in the world, people fight over land territory well a senior center is very similar so um, being able to prevent little wars from you know happening about all kinds of things creating an atmosphere so that people come together in in wonderful ways so for example um, we have um, we had and I mentioned it Monday we had Walter and Nancy Scroy lovely couple in their 90s and when the Chinese seniors first came to the center they, I mean they were just so welcoming they did they they had art they created art lessons together conversation it was just you know it's these spontaneous things that happen among people that are so special 
for example, somebody like uh, David Coyle, um, who um, decided after, after he gave up his uh, business, uh, he was a trucker and had uh, sold all kinds of things, he decided to go back to school to get a degree. Well, what he did was he needed help. I mean, so he found at, at the center, he found a teacher, um, Grace Taylor. She used to teach at Ringin Latin in, in uh, Cambridge, and she tutored him, and he got his BA from UMass. I mean, that was, and, and they, they did their tutoring lessons at the center. I mean, it was just so lovely. So I think that if I've done anything that I feel most proud of is creating the atmosphere so that people can find each other and, and create great relationships. Well, that <clears throat> sort of segues into this. You know, again, I hearken back to the late 90s, early 2000s. My mom, my dearly mm. recently departed mom, she passed at 90, but 20 years ago, so she was 70. Mm. And we were talking about the senior center and all of the news that, you know, we need this. She would say, "Why? Well, I, I would never use it. Why would I ever go to the senior center? It's not for me. Who would have go there? It's certainly not for me. Mm -hmm. But as she got older and as it mm -hmm. got built and mm -hmm. the programming, she was quite active down the senior center. Mm -hmm. So do you think that attitude still exists among the aging population uh, that who would go to the senior center? Or do you think you've sort of overcome that? I, that's a great question. And uh, I don't mean to be contradictory, uh, but, <laughs> but I do think the space is very beautiful and there's enough dynamism and programs that it is attracting people who otherwise would not seek us out. Uh, so, for example, our fitness room is really state-of-the-art. I mean, we've got great, great machines for people who, you know, if, they, if they're not looking at how, how old I am, they're just attracted to, the, they're attracted to the fitness room. Great way to work out. Um, so I think we have been able to do, attract a lot of people and offer uh, a variety of programs that, that are of interest to um, different generations, actually. Um, by, but it's still work that we are constantly doing to publicize what we're doing because people, um, there's something called ageism in our society, meaning um, discrimination against older people, and and um, we internalize that. Meaning, as we get older, we sometimes have those attitudes about ourselves. You know, I'm old. I don't want to be with those people. You know, um, it's sad because those people are your peers, and um, who can you relate to best if? not the people who know the music of your generation, know, uh, know the humor of your generation, and you know, spending time with them. But there is that barrier, and we constantly have to work on that. What, do you find that once they get there and, and experience it, their attitude might change? I mean, it's not for absolutely. everybody, obviously. Right. But Right. I, <laughs> absolutely. Abs that absolutely happens. There's some people no, truly, who say it's their home away from home. And I will add something else that ironically, maybe not so ironically, but it's, it may seem like an irony, that people actually look and feel and act younger when they've been engaged in the center. I mean, because they're exercising, they're, they're, they're engaging with other people. So I have seen people really look, feel, and act younger after coming for a while. Well, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant, but I'm gonna go there on this question. So sure. uh, on that theme, mm -hmm. and, and without casting any aspersions here at attendees of the Senior Center, but uh, you and I were chatting before the show, uh, you know, and I was asking for what goes on behind the scenes at the Senior Center, all these, what really goes on behind the scenes? <laughs> and I alluded to the fact, the simple trivia that 
uh, the highest rate of STDs. Mm -hmm. Okay, shocking. It's not college campus. It's it's at the villages in in the retirement communities in Central Florida, yeah. which I find to be both humorous and. Yeah. You know, seniors are active, apparently. Yes. So, uh, uh, anyway, so I'll yes. leave that for an open comment because you. So, but things of that sort, it doesn't it doesn't affect just college age kids. No, right. There, the problems and the issues um, are are the same, but there is the added um, bias. Well, that doesn't that doesn't happen to seniors. All kinds of things don't happen well, to seniors. Well, that was to my point, that apparently right. it does. It does. And you know, I, I, will, I, will, I will confess that it's sometimes when we offer programming, we have to be very careful how we word it so that we're not alienating people. Now, sex is one, death is another. You know, you would think, well, at the senior center, that's a place where, you know, it's appropriate to do programming on 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 um, matters of, of death and dying, but we have to be so careful for some of the reasons that, that we were stating before. It's like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. You know, I'm old. So, so we it's it's important for us to offer these programs because they help seniors. By the same token, we have to couch what we what we do so that it's pal, you know. Um, palatable, not palliative. <laughs> well, okay, I got that. So, well, and post-COVID, numbers are going up? We are starting to see numbers go up. Of course, the last surge, um, you know, we have had a surge, and so volunteers have, had started to retreat. So it's like move, move two steps forward, one step backward, but... Um, but things are moving in the right direction. We're thrilled, like, for example, next month, July 1, we're fully opening the fitness room. We had a very, very um, uh, limited for safety precautions, but that's going to be open completely. Um, blood pressure clinic is coming back, and I'm glad that um, your wife is going to be joining Debbie, that effort Debbie runs as a the, volunteer. Debbie, Debbie helps organize or run the blood pressure clinic. Yes. I think it's a way secretly to get me down there to make sure that, uh, you know, she might be the, well, the kids might be the cause of some of my blood pressure, but, uh, <laughs> but actually it's monitored pretty good. It, it is interesting up there, that dynamic, because you get a number, and there's always people that want to buck the line. It's an interesting <laughs> right. dynamic, people coming in and coming out. You know, uh, <laughs> if you ask about challenges of my job... <laughs> well, that was a good question, because that was know, the next one. What's the most challenging? There you go. Is being being <laughs> being judge, jury, and decision maker <laughs> about all these matters. Um, I mean, it is. it is How to be fair to everybody. How to create policies and, and how to communicate so that everyone feels like what you've done is fair. Yeah, that is... That, is, that really is very challenging, ever but have rewarding. To, ever have to discipline anybody? Anybody oh, yes. have to? Oh, really? Oh, Attendees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we have policy guidelines of behavior in place, and um, so, for example, um, yes. I mean, if we hear frank, um, you know, threatening or hateful behavior, yeah, I've had to do it, and. Um, it's, you know, we need to protect the seniors. There That's our job. It's like the senior version of being sent to the principal. <laughs> you, you have to go see Navi. You have to see the director. Go oh. sit in the director's chair outside the office. That was the worst at Winbrook School. If you had to sit in the hallway in a little chair outside of Mr. Blaney's office, everybody <laughs> knew you were bad. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's true. I was referred at times as the principal, and I thought, okay, maybe in another life. But <laughs> Well, so, okay, so in your comments the other day at your, at your send-off, at your mm -hmm. official town uh, uh, mm -hmm. send-off party, uh, the, uh, you t spoke about how the work culture or the, uh, all the changes you saw since you mm -hmm. came in in you know, around 2000 to yeah. the present. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tell us about how things have changed. Yes. I mean, because it's been almost almost a generation, 
since I started, you know. I think a generation is 25 years. Close so, enough. Yeah, <laughs> so there's been changes in, in, the, in, in the seniors. I mean, so many of uh, dear ones that uh, I love, and like your mom, um, have passed. And we have younger seniors. And um, so I would say on the, on the very positive end, what I've seen is that both in town government and in the community at large, I, I feel that Belmont has become a much more welcoming and diverse place, and that's that's been very nice to see over the years. Um, I think the the part that that saddens me and that I think is is going to be um, uh, a lot of work to help out with is that so many seniors um, are squeezed out of of the housing uh, of their homes because of, um, well, the, uh, very high taxes and the lack of housing to downsize. So, I mean, I'm thrilled that your mom got to live at the Hill Estates. Frat house for older folks. That's what I call it. But, you know, well, and it's, a, it's been wonderful. But, uh, but you probably know this. I mean, the mm. number of seniors living at Hill Estates has diminished uh, uh, considerably since I came aboard. Then it, the majority of people living at the Hill Estates were seniors. That's no longer the case at all. So there's very little. So, so um, the, you know, a lot of seniors are being squeezed out and, and, and are not able to age in place in Belmont. And I think that needs to be a priority. Um, may I make a plug for? You may. Thank plug you. Plug away. So um, one of the things um, that we've done in the last couple of years is <coughs> we've made <coughs> Belmont officially what's called age-friendly. Now that's <coughs> a certain certification because we, we pass through some um, um, uh, uh, tests and so forth and, 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 and put some uh, goals in place. Um, but now that we've gotten this designation, it means that we've got to work to make Belmont more age-friendly. And there is now an official town committee called the Age-Friendly Action Committee, and it's um, implementing uh, the Age-Friendly Action Plan. Um, and the reason I mentioned it, mention it vis-a-vis um, my remarks about housing is that that's a, a piece of the age-friendly action plan is uh, uh, to to assist with housing issues. Um, other aspects of age-friendly plan is to make Belmont more walkable for seniors and people with disabilities, um, and also to um, help improve outdoor spaces for seniors. So it's a, it's a really very important, uh, I think, component for the future of helping seniors stay in place. And if anyone is interested in, in helping the committee, it's a dynamite committee, uh, please email the chair, Judy Morrison, and uh, I could give the email address. Um, so it's J U D Y Morrison M O R R I S O N O nine at gmail dot com. Thank you. There you go. Excellent plug. Excellent plug. So, <clears throat> well, you named your successor going forward. So, what advice would you give the people that follow in your footsteps? You blazed your own trail. And you said email. I think when you started, you didn't even have an email address, did you? Well, <laughs> most, most of the staff did not do work on their computer. And I remember my boss at the time, Mel Kleckner, saying, you know, I think a good goal might be getting people on the computer. <laughs> that Mel, he was a visionary, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to help you. I get more aggravation when my computer doesn't work because it's supposed to help us. You know, it's like I'm from the government. I'm here for help. You know, that old joke. But uh, Yeah, so we so most, you, most so of staff did not even do their work on a computer, let alone we did not have email addresses. We had to create our own Yahoo accounts 
and we used those for official business. And it was only till 2002, 2003, when Dave Petto got on board and he got um, acclimated that we got actual uh, town email addresses, official ones. Boy, you've spanned, <laughs> spanned a whole bunch. It's a, that's it's such a short time, too. Right. And to, and to think that the Belder bus was not wheelchair accessible. It, it's, well, it was you know, a different, times have changed. It's, no, it's absolutely. The computer was probably the, in, in, a, in a regular room, too. Now you can carry it probably more in this than, than you ever had before. But, yeah. okay, so, all right, now let's get into some. So what's, what's next for you? You're stepping down after this uh, fabulous career. Oh, thank you. What, what are you doing? You going to have some fun? What are you going to do? Well, fun and work. Um, so I will be... Uh, developing a, my private practice in psychotherapy in Cambridge. Um, so that allows me to use a lot of my clinical skills that I, I really enjoy working and, and uh, um, really just hold my own hours, you know, be free to do that. And I, I want to um, use all the skills that I've learned over the years in social work to teach the younger generation. So I want to be available for opportunities to supervise social workers, especially in the aging field, because I think um, it's a very special field. And, um, and I think social workers who work with the elderly need support. It's not, it's not, it's not easy doing this kind of work. So that, that's what I'm doing on the, on the career side. And on the fun side, um, yeah, I'll have more time for gardening and, and being, uh, um, my older son lives in Hawaii, so I'm very blessed. In the winter, I will head out there um, for a month or so and... Um, there you go. Yeah. yeah you're going to keep up your dancing? You, you got robbed <laughs> on Dancing with the Belmont Stars. Oh my goodness. And maybe in Hawaii you can do the hula. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you, you say in jest, but the hula is great because you can dance. You, you, you can dance without high heels. So it's, I wouldn't have that. Well, <laughs> go ahead. Go <laughs> you ahead. wouldn't have that problem. No, but well. it's really, I think, a great dance. And actually, we've tr we're trying we're trying to get hula for the center because it's wonderful, soft movements and and gentle music, and it's great. Great on the body, logistically, and not, not like some of the kinds of dancing. So you laugh, but yes, who no, is in, who is in I my might smirk stars. a little bit, but I'm not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's not horrible. So No, that's not horrible at all. A couple, couple of fun questions, okay? We've heard about now, but we know about that, but there's got to be something that no one knows about you. So... Tell me something no one knows about you. I think, I think people don't know that I went to the High School of Performing Arts in New York. Now, that is the high, but that's not the, that's not the piece. That's the segue into what other more important things. Um, that was the high school, if you know the, the movie Fame. Yep. Okay. So those, so I went to high school um, at the time. Well, Fame was filmed afterwards. So my conducting teacher, and other, my English teacher were the same teachers that were in the movie. So that, that, that's, that was fun. And Freddie Prince, the comedian, was in my class. He was. He was. Look at that. Look at that. And he was the, he was the class clown. Well, he made some money at it. Yes, he Tragic did. ending. Too bad. Oh, that, that was, that was we won't devastating. Go, we won't go down that path. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway. Well, it's been it's been marvelous, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best success. I've known you a long yeah. time. Yes. So I interviewed you way back when, when I was younger, and you were just starting, and because you came from New York, I asked you, Red Sox or Yankees? <laughs> so which is it now? You've been here twenty years, but you're in New York. I still detect it a little bit. Oh, we, oh, I'm, I'm, Sox and Yankees. So people want to know. Me, nobody will ever let me get away with my my accent. No, nobody. <laughs> But I fell in love with Fenway Park, and from there I transitioned. So, 
Okay, so, that's so sort of an answer. Not quite as definitive as I would have liked, but that's I'm okay. I'm a Red Sox uh, fan. Uh, okay. All right, you heard it here. here. She's finally converted. <laughs> now, it's been my pleasure. Much luck and continued success. Don't Thank forget you. us little people here in Belmont. Come oh, on back. Oh, my God. M m grand people. So Not there you have it. Uh, Belmont Journal. I'm Steve Rosales. Until next time, take care.